Greetings, my fellow multi-planetary motionauts. Today I thought we could recreate the opening shot of my alien flower teaser. It is ridiculously simple. Now where better to start a journey to space than with NASA? This is images.nasa.gov, which is basically their media library. And you can check their usage guidelines, which says content is generally not copyrighted. But please double check that before you use any of these images. Right, let's find a celestial body. I know the New Horizons mission has some lovely images of Pluto. So I'm going to search for Pluto and then just see if I can find an image that I think would be suitable to do a flyover of. I think an image just like this one would be perfect. Majestic mountains? That sounds pretty good to me. So I will download the absolute highest quality version of this image and then treat that in Photoshop. There's only a few things I need to do, starting with setting the image mode to RGB color, because otherwise Cinema 4D will get confused. Then I'm going to turn this background into an actual layer, I will name that Pluto. I will make a copy of that layer and name the copy Atmo for atmosphere. And then I will apply a Gaussian blur to that layer, just to get rid of what looks like color banding in the atmosphere. A value of about 10 should be enough, and that will just smooth the atmosphere right out. Right, time to make yet another copy of the Pluto layer. And to this copy I will apply a high pass effect. There too, a value of 10 is pretty good. And this I will name Disp, because I will use it as a displacement map. With those bits done, I will save this file and move over to Cinema. Here in my Cinema 4D just bought this uh, new sphere here. This is going to be our planetoid, so I will make it huge. And I will also name it Pluto. And then I'll also add a ton of segments to this. Then it's time for some texture. I will create a new material, which I'll name Pluto. Turn off all channels, except for luminance, where I will load our freshly created PSD file. I'll then copy that texture and turn on displacement, then paste the same texture in there. Then I'll click through on the shader and there's this thing called layer sets where I get to pick whatever layer I want in a PSD and I want to use the disp layer for this. I'll jump back out and activate sub polygon displacement. Subdivision level of 5 is pretty good and then I will activate round geometry as well and turn up the power quite a bit. Right, let's apply this lovely material to our sphere and it's wrong. I'm going to create a brand new camera that I will use to project this texture on with. A good name for that would be Projection Cam. And for this to work I need to set the projection mode in my texture tag to Camera Mapping. Drag in our Projection Cam and then press Calculate to figure out the aspect ratio of our image. Then I can just jump into the camera and align that just perfectly with the horizon. I think that'll do. I'll now move our projection cam into Pluto and add a protection tag to it so we can't move it around or shift it and the texture will stick in place. Right, jumping out of the camera, the texture is repeated a ton of times and just for my own sake, I'm gonna get rid of those but you don't need to worry about a thing because from the angles we'll be using, it's not gonna matter. Right, nice and clean, I can work with this. Let's create the atmosphere. For that, we need to create a new plane as a child of our projection camera Make sure the plane is on the z-axis. Let's reset PSR. And then we just move it back along the z-axis until it perfectly intersects with the horizon of Pluto. And when it does that, we just scale that plane up so it fills the field of view completely. Now this will need a material of its own, so I will copy our Pluto material and rename it Atmo. I'll turn off the displacement because we don't need it. Go into luminance jump into the texture there, jump into layer sets and select our Atmo layer set. Then I'll copy that texture and paste it into alpha. And then I'll also uncheck image alpha. Then I'll just need to copy the textures from Pluto to the atmosphere plane and replace the Pluto texture with the Atmo texture. So if we were to render this now, it would look more or less exactly like the image. So let's do something a bit different with it. Let's do an animation for this. I'm going to create a new camera in this exact position, which I'll name Cam1 because this is the starting position. I will give it a bit of a wider angle lens so we get a bigger field of view and it's going to be a bit more dramatic when we fly over this. 
I need to move in just close enough so we don't cut off our atmosphere at the edges here. Once we find a position we like, we can make a copy of this camera, which we will name Cam2, and then this will be the end position of our camera move. So we will just move that forward a little bit, and once that has a good position, let's make another copy, and that camera we name MorphCam. And then we add a camera morph tag to that camera, and we drag in Cam1 and Cam2 as the references here. And then starting at frame 0, we will set a keyframe for the blend, jump to our last frame and set the blend to 100%, and that just gives us the animation. Let's also visit our timeline and select both of those keyframes. Press the L key to make sure that they are linear so we don't start static and we don't finish static. And let's hide away all the scene cameras before giving this a playthrough. And if we were to render a frame at any point, it would be photoreal because it's based on the image. But at the same time, we get that three-dimensional move thanks to the camera projection. But what we don't get right now is stars. So let's create another sphere and make this one massive. I'm going to set it to 10,000 centimeters. And then that needs its own material, so I will create one of those. I will name that one stars. And I'll turn off all the channels except for luminance. And in the luminance, I want to create a surface shader called Starfield. And that just generates a simple star field. You could also use an HDRI of the night sky for the stars, and that would probably look a bit better. It's just a really quick and dirty way to get some stars in there. You can probably see a few light points. So now I'm going to render this out and then probably grade the heck out of it because it is a black and white image after all. What I actually ended up doing was to add a satellite photo of Berlin at night on top of the image of Pluto in my textures. And then I added loads of glows in After Effects as well as some levels, some color balance and grain. And then this is what popped out. And this technique should work with any planet. So best of luck with your terraforming and until next time, thank you for your time. And of course, stay in orbit. Maestro. Maestro.